So if this looks slanted, crooked, or in any way, that is because um, of my pop socket. I can't center my phone onto my tripod. And so it's heavy on one side. So uh, as long as it doesn't fall, I'm happy. Another thing I've learned is that my new phone doesn't fit my tripod. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jasmine and I talk about mental health. I daily struggle with depression and abandonment anxiety, uh, social media anxiety, and I am also a suicide survivor. And that's what I mean by my phone's gonna fall. Okay, I uh, changed the angles changed now because I'm hoping my ring light will hold it. Hoping, being. The keyword here and since it's like a like one of those like flexible stands and my phone is heavy and so it weighs it down so but we're going to uh, press forward no more interruptions please today is my 26th birthday March 24th and this is the day that I was supposed to die Here's why. I'm gonna say like maybe five or six years ago, I had made a five year plan. I was 20. I've always, always struggled with depression and a big part of my depression, the reason why it's been so hard to overcome is because nothing in my life has ever changed. I've been homeschooled my entire life which means that the majority of the time I was stuck at home with only my mom and my brother as my company. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Celsius. Being socially isolated for a majority of my life also deprived me of a dating life. I never had any men perceiving me. I never been out on a date until I got a Tinder account. Never received any kind of physical affection from a man. Never received flowers from a man. Anything like that. So that was basically my entire uh, pre-adulthood. Going into adulthood, of course, the only thing that changed was I wasn't in school anymore. I had attempted to go to college, but that plan failed. I attempted to serve a mission, and that plan failed, giving me more emotional trauma for my church. Never afford a car. I could also never afford to go out and live on my own. Also did not have a dating life, so did not have a man to move in with as well. I had no man providing for me. <laughs> the point I'm getting at here is the transition into adulthood meant nothing changed for me. Nothing in my life was changing. I was still stuck living under my parents' roof while my brother was off, like, living in Japan for two years and then going to school in Utah till this day. Did not have a car to even escape for just a little while. And I still, once again, never had a man. I never had romance in my life. Before you guys go into the comments saying, Oh, you don't need a man. You're an independent woman. Blah, 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 blah. Listen, 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 listen. Get the point here, okay? Get the point, okay? I was lonely. I, I know I don't need a man. I don't. But I want a man. I want a man because I've spent my life in social isolation, I have abandonment anxiety, and I just want a man to be by my side to live a life with. Okay, now get that through your head. Moving on. Once again, I was still socially isolated in my own home. I'm 20 years old, depression's real low, and I come up with a five-year plan. My plan was that if everything in my life stayed the same way, nothing in my life changed, meaning I still didn't have a car, I still lived with my parents, I still did not 
have my career working for me and I wasn't financially stable, if I still did not have a boyfriend, by the time I was 25, if nothing in my life changed by the time I turned 25, five years later, then on my 26th birthday, I was going to give myself one more year, but on my 26th birthday, on March 24th, 2023, I was going to end my life. And that was going to be it. I was just going to give up. It was like nothing in my life is ever going to change. Flash forward three years later, I'm 23 now, and the man I love abandons me again. And right then and there, I attempt to suicide. I went to the hospital, I stayed in the mental hospital for five days, and then I came home, and I became a suicide survivor. But that night, I decided, that was the scariest moment of my life. I was dying. I was literally dying. And in that moment, I chose life. In that moment, I made the decision to put that five-year plan away because I was never going to attempt again. No matter what happens, I was going to choose life. No matter how hard my life gets, I was going to choose life because I knew that, oh my gosh, it's, it's going to get hard. Like I know trials are always going to happen and I know that I knew that I was going to get to a low point again and again and again but I also knew that as long as I just stuck out and didn't give up then I could see the light again I could get through it I can conquer it and then I'll be better for it every single time. And so I chose life. Fast forward to today. I'm still living under my parents' roof. I still don't have a car. Uh, I'm still very much socially isolated a majority of my days. I do have a very good, uh, very good support system, however. However, a majority of those friends also moved away last year. Like three of them moved away last year, and now one of them is moving in August. So, yay me. Yay for that. I also have gotten to the point where all of my emotional trauma from working has piled up on me so much that I literally can't even get a job anymore. I can't work and I have to apply for disability if my YouTube channel does not take off. If this project I'm working on does not work out. I have to apply for disability. And that's still a chance that, that it's going to be another dead end, but I have to try it anyway. And I am so tired. I'm so tired of having to leech off of my family and my friends for money. I'm so tired of being stuck at home without having even a car to leave for just a couple hours. I'm so sick of being in such a cramped little space and not having a place of my own. And I'm also so sick and tired of feeling unnoticed, of feeling so completely forgettable and replaceable and also unlovable romantically. I'm also so sick and tired of watching the man I love suffer the way he is. A month ago, in February 2023, my emotional battery died. I had no energy. No emotional energy, no physical energy. I was in so much pain and at the same time, 
I was so empty and so numb. I was so just tired. The only thing that gave me energy was being around my friends and I'm so, so grateful for my friends, for their, their, their support and their love for me during this time. Because if it wasn't for them, then I would not have gotten through this. A month ago, I regretted surviving suicide. And after two years of being a survivor, almost three years, next month is gonna be my third year anniversary. But after that amount of time, for the first time, I have felt suicidal again. And I stopped eating. I wasn't ready at that point to take that step, to stop eating altogether and let myself wither away. I wasn't ready for that because I still had a purpose here. I had a dog to take care of and I had to stick through it to the very end to see the outcome. I have to be here for him just to make sure that he had somebody supporting him and loving him to make sure he knew that he had somebody. I was interrupted again. One month ago, I regretted surviving suicide, but I chose to stay still, to see this through. I was tired. My battery was literally dead. I was so broken, so unmotivated. I felt like there was literally no purpose for anything. There was no purpose of me trying to even do anything. I still tried, I attempted to do it. But my battery was just so dead that I just could not get myself to do anything. But every day I tried and when I failed, I take my, I'll give myself a break and I try again the next day. I kept moving forward, pushing forward, praying, crying every day. And now it's my 26th birthday, the day I was supposed to die. But instead I'm going to live. I'm going to live my life. I'm now at 10% battery. Um, maybe 15 now, but I am pushing through. I am progressing. My faith in God and Jesus Christ is so strong and so real. Like, I literally acknowledge His presence every single day, especially since I have begun my magic pra practices, my psychic practices. I have come so much closer with Christ and it has really helped me through this. It's really given me a root for my faith, my strength, and my healing. I'm not fully healed yet. I still have a long way to go because still literally nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. I'm broke. But I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward with faith. I'm moving forward with manifestation. And I know that it's going to be okay. Whatever happens, it is how it's meant to be. And it's going to be okay. I know whatever happens, I can conquer it because I've already been through so much. But whatever comes next, I know I can conquer it because of what I just went through. I'm confident, I'm confident in my manifestations. I'm confident in the tarot readings I've gotten, I'm confident in the answers to prayers I've gotten, that what I'm scared of is not going to come to pass. Anyways. I'm just your little reminder to stay. You can conquer anything. Your battery may die like mine did. It may last a week. It may last a month. 
it may last several months. But no matter how low your battery gets, emotionally, physically, spiritually, whatever, just stay. Give yourself the time that you need to heal, to get through it, and you will. When I decided to stay three years ago, and I decided to put away my five-year plan, I made a promise to myself that every year for my birthday, I was going to do something big. Like, I, want, I just wanted to travel or do something for myself. So this year, today, the day I was supposed to die, I really wanted to do something great. Alas, and I have to apply for disability now. I'm dog sitting, and they're letting me have friends over to use their pool. So that's my big thing this year. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I really hope that you can yourself find a reason to stay, no matter how hard things get. Do something big for your birthday. You deserve it. You deserve all the crowns in the world. If you are interested in supporting me, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and uh, subscribe, because what are you doing? Share this with anyone who you think might benefit from hearing my story. And in the comments below, if you are also a suicide survivor like me, tell me how long would it have been? How long would we have been without you if your attempt worked? And what is the greatest thing that's come of it, of choosing to live? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, say happy birthday, why not? <laughs> also, be sure to check out all of my other videos. I do vlog. Also, check out my links below to see my photography website. I hope you guys have a very super sparkly day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!